Chemical Commodities Incorporated site, we call it CCI for short, uh, was an, uh, a chemical brokerage facility that operated from 1951 through 1989. In the early 1960s, uh, for a few years, Rockwell sent waste to the CCI site for recycling, mainly solvents that were used to clean the rocket engines after successful test fires, mainly trichloroethylene or TCE. Boeing was contacted by the EPA um, in the mid-1990s when they identified that there was a problem with the operational activities that the CCI site was conducting. We were working closely with the EPA, with the state, with the community, and over a dozen other parties that um, had sent waste to the CCI. And we realized really early on that coordinating between that many parties wasn't going to be the most efficient way and effective way to clean up the site. And so Boeing took the lead early on, working with the EPA, and brought in a lot of technical experts from industry as well as academia to come up with a really good strategy on behalf of the parties. The media contaminated site was on-site soils and on-site groundwater. We also had to deal with um, groundwater that had migrated off-site to the west, which unfortunately has impacted some homes in the area, creating indoor air problems. At the very beginning, the site was terrible, and people all around that came to the meetings were afraid, right? They were afraid of, uh, they'd been exposed to something that would cause diseases. They were afraid their property values were worthless. They were afraid that the trichloroethylene might get into their, their drinking water. They had a situation where they had a chemical recycling facility in their neighborhood. And it wasn't something that they enjoyed having, and it wasn't something nice to look at. And they really wanted the end of, at the end of the day for that site to be something they could use. And that resonated well with all of the folks that were on the project team, all of the responsible parties, the EPA, the state. And it allowed us to kind of rally around a vision for what we wanted to do with the property at the end of the day. It also allowed us to really zone in when we were making our decisions to ensure that that end state was being considered and we had our eye on the big picture. If the community hadn't been involved, I don't know whether this process could have happened anywhere near in the length of time it took, but there was constant pressure to move it forward and move it forward and people, people cared about it. We were able to do it in a year ahead of schedule, really with the good coordination between our, our team and our consultants, the EPA and their technical folks, as well as the community. A group called a CAG, or a Citizens Advisory Group, was created by the community early in the process. And what that did is it allowed interested community members to have a forum to be able to ask questions, communicate their concerns, and it allowed Boeing and the EPA to listen to those concerns and address them in our remediation plans. We selected a remedy that dealt with on-site excavations of soils that were contaminated with heavy metals and a larger area that was contaminated with VOCs. We used a number of innovative technologies on the CCI site to help clean up the soil and the groundwater. Uh, namely, we used something called a large diameter auger, or about a six foot wide auger that helped dig out some of the hot spots in soil all the way down to the groundwater. And then we injected a chemical into the groundwater that helps break down the contamination or the solvents in the groundwater. And uh, we did that both along the site as well as in some of the um, streets in the neighborhood. Vapor mitigation systems were first in place in a number of homes, as you'll see directly across from the site. Uh, I think there were nine homes at that time that we tested and had elevated levels of uh, TCE, PCE, in the indoor air, so we did put vapor mitigation systems in place. As the plume was defined as we moved away from the site, we found more uh, homes that had excessive indoor air levels of VOCs, and Boeing installed um, mitigation systems in all those homes. The other component of the remedy was long-term monitoring. Uh, we have been conducting quarterly injections of chemical accident on-site and off-site. We have made a large impact on the hottest area of the plume migrating off site. Enough people were involved to keep saying this is what we need to have happen and, and the EPA stood behind it all the way and Boeing stepped up and, 
and was excited to try some new methods to remediate a site. So, This site with the green space uh, kind of lent itself for this next step which Boeing approached us wanting to do. They were really proactive in saying, look, we have this green space. It's 1.5 acres. It's not really conducive to ballparks and things like that. So. Green space, we hadn't really gotten down to what that meant precisely, and, and uh, we got this call from Adam and the EPA, and, and they would started to work, had this idea of trying to take it another step further and make something that's uh, environmentally friendly here. And we ensured that the things that we put on the property with our kiosks, with our walkways, with the way that the gardens were developed, um, incorporated all of the community's concerns as well as the EPA and the state's ideas from some of the experiences they've had doing similar kinds of restoration projects. Boeing brought in Chip Taylor from Monarch Watch. They brought in the Pollinator Partnership from San Francisco uh, and, uh, and some other entities that were critical in making this turn into an ecological reuse revitalization area. You know, one of the things that's happening around the planet is that we are destroying habitat at an incredible rate. I mean, here in the United States alone, we're losing 6,000 acres a day due to development. And that's a lot of habitat to lose, and, and there's got to be some way to bring some of that habitat back. One of the really nice features of this site is the, the educational possibilities that it affords. Uh, there is a tremendous educational opportunity here. Not only can they walk down this uh, pathway and look at the kiosks, and learn something from the chaos and learn something from their teachers about pollination. But they can actually visit the gardens, take pictures of what's in the gardens, uh, learn the plants, learn the pollinators. Our role at the CCI site was to really help build that connection between plants, people, and pollinators, which is at the core of what the Pollinator Partnership does. We really want to uh, revitalize ecosystems by helping plant native plants, bringing the pollinators into the system, and then opening it up for people to enjoy. So we uh, worked with other scientists uh, on the C at the CCI site on selecting native plants uh, appropriate for the region, and also developing the outreach materials and uh, kiosks that you see throughout the gardens. What we're trying to do with this particular site is illustrate what it takes to provide the resources that monarch butterflies need. As this matures, uh, we're going to have a much more complete habitat that allows for all the butterflies, but particularly monarch butterflies, to use this site. If you're not involved, nothing will happen. So you need to get involved and get your neighbors involved too, you know, and get, get all the professional help you can. I think there's pride among the people that are here now in, in the neighborhood overall. The whole process was treated with so much dignity and respect. By the time it's over, I would tell people elsewhere to hang in there because uh, it is a feeling of accomplishment that you can pass on. It was an honor and a privilege to be one of the first awardees uh, of the LEAFS Award from Region 7 EPA. It was something that was really exciting to Boeing and me personally, and something that really was a great end and a great recognition of all the hard work the team did throughout the many years on this project to get to the point where we have this wonderful pollinator habitat. It's become clear to me that Superfund sites can be cleared up. Now, it's, it's a tremendous effort. Uh, it's going to cost a fair amount of money, but they, these sites can obviously be repurposed for public use. That's what this particular exercise demonstrates. The long-term benefits of, of having this site, I, I think, are, are immeasurable. Um, the, the community itself now has, again, what was environmental um, eyesore, uh, to now where it's a, they have lush growing grass and you have these beautiful beds of flowers. The pollinator prairie was a huge success. Um, we, we weren't sure until um, the the public, the community really uh, embraced it. Uh, and that's when we knew we, we really hit on something. And uh, the, the pollinators have come. So um, from all angles, it, it was successful for plants, for people, and for pollinators. It's really an outstanding piece of work. It really shows that a diverse and committed team that includes government agencies, um, parties cleaning up the site, 
coming together with the community and creating something that's just an outstanding, um, outstanding exercise of site reuse and revitalization and habitat and natural conservation.